time, and it was his decision making at the urging of John Oliver and myself that helped move this along. And Senator Downing and Representative Pignatelli and Representative Martin, they're terrific people. I've had a chance to work with them during the last couple of years, and they are outstanding advocates for this region. And I want to thank uh, John Oliver. Uh, John and I, geographically at different times, represented about three quarters of the state. <laughs> and, but John was a full and fast partner in the urging of this money being extended for this purpose. The Judy and her staff have done, done a great job of educating me along the way. Now, I want to give, because I still spend a lot of my time in a, in a classroom at UMass and spent the better part of a career, at least half of my professional career has been spent in the classroom. So I want to give you just a little bit of a civics lesson on the expenditure of this initiative. When President Obama, to his credit, said that the issue that confronted America on the day that he became president, as it related to the economy, was the issue of demand. Very simple issue, demand. He proposed a stimulus package. And not only did John Olver and I vote for the package, we got up and defended it on the floor of the House of Representatives. It was a long-term, worthwhile investment. I just came from Milford a couple of days ago, where they're completing intersection work. In Bellingham, completing intersection work across the valley. These were worthwhile, long-stall projects that got underway. Emphasis on investment. Now, I want to just, for the moment, not the present company, to be included in this critique. But to point something out, there's a growing element in the American public sector who will be at every groundbreaking and at every ribbon cutting and against every public expenditure. It doesn't work. If you request the money, the allocation, the earmark, then your job, once you've received the allocation, is to get up and defend it in front of the public and not to retreat in the face of that adversity. The disconnect that occurs when people do that is it allows one the luxury of saying, geez, isn't this great, and to the next group, after all, I voted against it. It doesn't square. You either voted for it or you voted against it. And in this instance here, this was a long-term investment. Another quick part of the lesson. The private sector examined this possibility from A to Z. If they could have done it with a reasonable margin of profit, they would have done it. They came to the conclusion that they couldn't do it. Hence, the government filled the void. Now, I ask for those of you who don't live in the Boston region, don't you think that the children in western Massachusetts, behind us, in the name of national defense, having an educated population, ought to have the same opportunity that those children do within 495? And that's what this argument is really about. So we've had a chance, I think, with affirmative government a positive initiative that emanated from Washington, a worthwhile expenditure, a long-term investment that the governor in his wisdom decided to allocate, again, in terms of regional equity. Last point. I've had a chance during a long career now to sit on the Ways and Means Committee. We do international expenditure. We do taxes, trade, tariffs. For these children that are behind us today, we all ought to be able to agree on one fundamental discussion point. No matter what the elected might say, globalization is not going to retreat. The children in Shanghai understand that, and the children here in Otis understand that. And for those of us who are in decision-making capacities, we need to understand, embrace it, and prepare the public for it. These children are going to be part of a workforce that's going to know international addresses. And I've been over the years, as I know, we're going to have a chance to witness some of this accomplishment with the space program. I grew up in the 60s, and Jack Kennedy got it right 
about space travel. Jack Kennedy understood what that was going to mean to the future. When you witness today this opportunity with Skype just in a few minutes, that was the outgrowth of the investment in big science. And guess what? America, despite our economic challenges, can always afford a big science project. Congratulations from the United States of America.